Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this channel is all about how to make money from your art. And for me this includes things like photography, videography, and a little bit of graphic design as well. I was really excited to make this video because it marks one year to the day that I started on stock photography and specifically on Shutterstock. So I was really excited to make this video and just talk about the last year and all the experiences that I had and also the earnings that I was able to make in the last 365 days. So I want to talk about Shutterstock mostly because that's predominantly where I made my money, but I'm also going to mention a few of the other stock sites that I used, including Adobe Stock, Pond5, Big Stock, and Black Box. So the first thing that I really want to break down is just how many photos I had on Shutterstock and all the other stock photography sites that I'm talking about, just to give you kind of a basic idea of what you can have in your portfolio so that you'll start making similar sales. And quite honestly, you might do a lot better than me if you're a good gifted photographer because uh, this last year I also just started photography and so I've been using stock photography and stock footage as a way to kind of supplement my learning and to kind of just generally get better at it and to refine my marketable skills as a photographer. So if you're already a good photographer, chances are you're going to make more money than me because your composition, your lighting, and all your techniques are going to be superior to my own. But since I'm a beginner, it's kind of an interesting perspective because if you're thinking about getting into something like this, it's a good benchmark for where you can start to, to where you can end up. So on Shutterstock, I have about 450 images uploaded right now, and that includes about uh, 20 vectors and about 430 images so far. I also have about 30 videos uploaded. So in total, I have about 500 or so total assets that can be licensed by other people so that they can purchase these. So that's how many ballots I have in the draw right now. So during this past year I made a grand total of $120 US or about $160 Canadian which is more relevant for me. But uh, I'm going to go in US dollars just because it's an easy conversion rate for everybody when you're talking about it. So I made about $120 in total across all of the platforms that I've used and so that average is about $10 a month. Now my best month so far in the last year was $50, in which case I sold a video and a lot of images at the same time, and that was last month in May. And that makes a lot of sense because, you know, if, if, if we're going by getting better every month and you're doing something that's cumulative, naturally the most recent month is going to be the one that I make the most sales in, which is good. Looking forward, it means that as I slowly increase and slowly add to my portfolios, I can expect a greater return on my time investment into this. Uh, on Shutterstock, I made about 70% of my uh, revenue, it's 70% of $100. $20. So it's around the $85 to $86 mark. Um, so this is the grand total that I made on Shutterstock during the last year. And doing this I sold about 92 images and I sold about three videos. And so in total I made uh, just under 100 sales on it and my monthly average was somewhere uh, between I think it was about 8 to 17 was my average sales per month. They're all worth different amounts of money so I'm not going to get into too much of the specifics about what each image is worth but generally they go from a few cents all the way up to a couple dollars and videos can sell for anything from I don't know maybe about twenty dollars all the way up to in the hundreds depending on how quality your footage is and that sort of a thing but if you're on Shutterstock you probably already know this information so uh, so Shutterstock was predominantly the place I made the most amount of money I made a dollar fifty on big stock but I'm also just recently on that one and I've only been uploading infrequently on it so I have about 50 images up there so far. On Adobe stock I've only made 24 cents because I've only made one sale and also because I only have 30 images up there so far. On Pond5 I actually haven't made any sales so far so I'm still uncertain about that platform. I think they're more of a video kind of um, graphic design type uh, website so I have to play around with that a little bit more probably in order to actually get a sale on it and I'm thinking I'm going to spend a little bit more time cultivating really strong footage. Um, I work in kind of an industrial park and I work out with a lot of different machinery so I really want to get some more of that that footage and stuff so I'm kind of working on getting a camera out to where I work so I can film some of the things that I'm doing at work and hopefully hopefully that will work into more sales. The last one that I want to talk about is Black Box and this one was really good for me because I made just one sale on it. I have very few assets uploaded on there something like 25 videos and they only accept videos because what they do is you basically send your videos into Black Box and they put it on a whole bunch of different stock footage uh, sites and you're exclusive to Black Box once you upload with them. So whatever piece of footage you have and you upload with them, you can't just then go ahead and upload it to Shutterstock. But I actually really like their platform. I think they're, they've are they got a really good thing going and obviously since I made a sale, I can validate that it actually works. So this year going forward, I am going to put a little bit more time and effort into kind of uploading onto Blackbox and working more with that platform because I think it's quite strong. It's very user friendly and very, very, um, very basic to use and that's kind of nice when you're just getting started with this sort of thing. If it's nice and simple to use, uh, the simpler it is, just 
just the better. So all in all, I've made over 100 sales across all of the platforms, and I've resold a lot of images. I've had a few that sold upwards of seven times, and then I've had a couple videos that sold as well, and obviously those ones are a little bit more uh, financially uh, rewarding because it's a bigger item. So, uh, so yeah, it's been good to sell a few videos and to kind of get the ball rolling on that. Now, the thing I really wanted to discuss with this video is looking back on the last year, considering whether or not stock photography, stock footage is actually worth it right now. And for me personally, I would have to say 100% it is yes. I'd love doing this. It was a lot of fun and going forward, I have a lot of really good ideas for how to actually make this a financially viable option to kind of look into. Um, my goals going forward are probably to try and get an average of between uh, 50 to $150 a month off my sales. And I think that's really uh, a good way of looking at it. You want to try and make targets and try and achieve them. So uh, for the last year, I was trying to hit about a $50 uh, month at some point. I didn't care when, when it was or how I did it. Um, and that was last month. So I was really happy to hit that goal. So I think if you're actually really serious about this medium, I think if you're serious about actually putting in the time and the effort into creating the, the material, you can actually do really well with it. And uh, it depends on what you mean by well, because I'm doing a couple of other different passive income sources. And by passive income, I of course just mean that you put a lot of time and effort in upfront. And then over time, it kind of pays you back um, passively, even when you're not actively working on something. So I have a lot of different passive income sources that I'm kind of working on. I have a regular full-time job, and then I also do freelance work now, more with the cameras that I have to work with. So alongside the stock photography thing and the stock footage thing, I've been cultivating uh, building clients and building skills to kind of do videography and photography with actual clients. So uh, it's been a really good tool that I've used in order to kind of build those skills, build a portfolio, and actually get a validated response to whether or not the products that I'm creating are actually worth anything. Because a lot of the time you're just taking pictures and if you're a beginner, there's no real indicator of whether or not your, your photos are any good. So I find that if somebody's willing to pay for them, that's a good indicator that you've actually created something that's worthwhile or that's something that's useful. So I think uh, using it as an indicator or a piece of litmus paper or something like that, I think stock photography is really uh, valid for that sort of a thing. And all in all, it's a long game. So I'm not expecting to make um, $1,000 a month right off the get-go. It's a portfolio that you have to build across time, and that's what I'm doing. I'm focusing on doing it every single day, putting a little bit more effort into it, putting a little bit more time into it, and then as my skills get better as well, and as my equipment also gets better, people are willing to pay more and more for the things that I'm creating. So my thoughts on the last year is it's totally worth it. I had a lot of fun doing it. Going forward, I'm definitely going to continue doing it. It's been fun making these videos as well and just showing off what I'm doing, and in general, people seem to have a positive response to it, so I think a lot of other people are out there enjoying this hobby and enjoying making little pieces of money here and there from it. All right, so now let's just jump into the portfolio and I just wanna show you the three uh, best-selling vectors that I have, the three uh, best-selling photos that I have, and also the three best-selling videos that I've, I've got. So hopefully these can be of use to you when you see what I've sold that sold multiple times and that's kind of made the most money for me. And so potentially you can take these ideas and concepts and apply them to your own portfolio and hopefully you, you get something out of that as well. So let's jump into the photos first. And the first one that I have here that sold the most by far, and this is on different platforms as well, I've sold it on Adobe stock, big stock, and Shutterstock is just a long exposure of patio lights, and you've probably seen this in one of my other videos if you've watched it, but this one continues to sell regularly. So if you have access to a nice backyard or a nice patio area, take some long exposures of it because they come out looking very nice if you have a couple chairs, and um, apparently they're very useful to a lot of people. And then the next one that I sold quite a few times also was just a few Easter eggs on some construction paper. And this was just a basic little flat lay that I did, and so these were just Easter eggs on spoons, primary colors, very simple layout. There's room for a text should somebody want to put that in there. And so this one sold quite a few times just around the Easter time. So more holiday oriented things tend to work out a little bit better if you have uh, good uh, quality images to use. So the next one is just a picture I took over at a friend's house during a barbecue and it was just a dog poking its head through their deck. Again, you might have seen this one in my other video, but it continues to sell quite frequently. I think it's sold approximately six times so far as well. And it's just been for the lowest uh, licensing rate. So it hasn't made as much money, but it's sold quite frequently. So uh, I'm really happy with that picture because I just shot it on a smartphone. It was a very basic shot and it turned out fairly well. So moving on now uh, to the three best vectors that I've sold so far. And I've only uploaded about 25 vectors because I'm new to creating these, but I just wanted to share these with you in case you wanted some ideas 
all of the ones I've sold so far are kind of in the same, uh, cut from the same cloth. And so they've all been around CBD oil, so uh, cannabidiol oil. I just uh, had been practicing trying to make some sort of vectors and this was popular in the news at the time. So uh, I noticed that some of my other photos of marijuana stores around Canada during legalization period, I noticed that these were selling quite frequently. So I was like, maybe if I create some vectors around the same concept, they'll actually do well. And I was right. Some of them sold right off the bat. And so I sold a couple little background type images of cannabidiol oil or CBD oil and a couple little logo type items and then the other one that I sold was um, just a couple vectors that were a stove and a old-fashioned water pump and I was creating these vectors anyways for a plumber that I know so that they could use them on their business card so the whole concept was just heating and uh, heating and plumbing so I just wanted to create something for them so that they could use it on their business card and it turned out fairly well so I decided to just post it on uh, Shutterstock as well so that other people could use it and it went ahead and sold so I've only been doing this for about two months with the vectors uh, so I haven't had that many sales with it but my skills are getting a little bit better and so hopefully in the future I can have more to look forward to there. Now for the videos, I sold a few this year and so the three best selling ones so far this year were just me walking in a field close to a wind turbine. The next one was just me taking a shot out the window going through the Rocky Mountains. And this was the one that I sold on Black Box. And the last one I sold was just me poking my head into the attic where I used to live and just doing kind of a fake home inspection wearing a hard hat. So this one was a little bit silly but it ended up selling so I guess it was a, it was a great joke because I made some money off of it. So it was really good to, to see what is selling, what isn't. And I think typically what sells is uh, shots with people in it. So if you have the opportunity uh, to do that or to stick a person in there any way you can, even if it's just you, go ahead and do that because that seems to be a little bit uh, a little bit better of, a, of an avenue to explore. So I really have been having a lot of fun doing this stock photography thing. I think it's a great avenue for a lot of amateur photographers to look into to increase their skills, to make a little bit of money, and to just have some fun increasing their skills. I think I kind of treat it like a game. I'm a very competitive person so I treat the the money I make like points and that sort of a thing so I go out and get some really cool shots. I have a lot of fun doing that and then at the end of the day maybe I make a little bit of that money back over time. But in essence, I'm really trying to build my skills. I'm really trying to get a bit more professional with the photos that I'm producing. So hopefully as time goes on, my quality will increase as well. And then I can apply this skill, not just to stock, uh, stock photography and stock footage and that sort of thing, but also to um, actual clients and, and going out and taking pictures and earning money from different sources so that I can, at the end of the day, have a better paycheck and have a more fun experience overall. And this way I'll be able to continue working uh, at any given time, even if I don't have a client. So I can always create stock footage and stock photos if I don't have a client. And then if I do have a client, then potentially I'll be making more money with them. So, you know, it, it works out both ways. I can always fill the time with this particular hobby and this particular outlet. So I've had a lot of fun doing this this year and I plan to do it full bore for the next year. And I think I have a strategy that's going to be a little bit better financially because this year was, I wouldn't say it was disappointing, but it was um, probably lower than most people would want if they were going out to sink this much time into something. So um, my plan going forward is a little bit more strategic and I'll be hopefully sharing a lot of those tips with you and, and what I'm planning to do. So I hope you're having fun doing the stock photography thing as well. I had a lot of fun doing it. I'll catch you in the next video and I'll hopefully keep updating you on how I'm doing with things and hopefully you can peel from those strategies and use them yourself. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.